We are back in Beverly Hills at Sing, where Jim Quick just gave a speech in front of a bunch of business owners. He's an expert in terms of coaching entrepreneurs, leaders, and innovators, and has coached everyone from Virgin to many other successful companies, including my buddy Tony Shea's company, Zappos. And I think it's really cool to have you here because he's someone who's really an expert, not just in terms of how your mind works and entrepreneurship, but in terms of speed reading, learning, memory. And I'd love to have you share some of your secrets. Absolutely. How to unlock that massive potential within you in terms of learning because I'm a huge advocate of learning. Oh, I think that if, I think leaders are readers. I think if the, one of the most powerful superpowers to have in the 21st century is the ability to learn faster because right now entrepreneurs or executives, who is everyone watching this, you're not paid for your muscle power, you're paid for your mind power. But school is a great place to learn what to learn, math, history, science, Spanish, but not a great place to learn how to learn. And it's not even just a nice to have, it's like a must have. You must learn quickly because the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. And that's the real <laughs> secret. I mean, if you want, if you want your business to grow, your, your, your brain has to grow. And that's the challenge because we live in this age of distraction and digital dementia and everything, everyone's like, you know, like this and they're getting their dopamine fixes. And it's hard to keep people focused nowadays. And so uh, what I'm all about is teaching people how to learn quickly how to be able to absorb information quickly, how to remember it, and so that they could go out there and be an expert you know, in their career and, uh, and really lead the pack. What is the secrets that make it different in terms of like what you teach, yeah. in terms of learning and actually retaining what you learn? Okay, so my, my focus is really showing people that they are geniuses, that you're born with genius inside of you, that you're, and it's your brain, right? This owner manual, but it doesn't come with this owner's manual. Your brain is like the most powerful supercomputer in the whole universe, but it doesn't come with the instructions on how to be able to maximize it. And they say we use a very small percentage of it, of its potential. You know, Einstein said 10%, and then later on Stanford said 2%, and then one ten thousand one percent I mean, I think we used all, all our brain for the most part, but it's how we use it. Is, is very different than how we should be using it. And so that, that's the difference. Now, a lot of uh, what I always preach is that field experience is king. And I'm always yeah. really deep into formal education, True. did two MBAs, now I'm studying law at Harvard. Wow. But I mean, I'm still learning most of what I learned from the field, from actually mm -hmm. getting engaged in something. But I'd be curious what your thought is about kind of like the practical theoretical learning versus mm -hmm. actual field experience learning and just getting your hands and having an all pot response. Yeah, I, 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 I believe that Formal education has its place. Um, it's just my biggest challenge is it hasn't changed a lot over time. And so we live in an age of electric cars that are automated, spaceships that are going to Mars, but how people, go, how people choose to learn is like a horse and buggy, and that's a big challenge. They say if Rip Van Winkle, you know, the guy who slept for all that time, if he woke up today, the only thing he would recognize are schools. And that's a big challenge. So I, I think that there's this quote that says, don't let school get in the way of your education. And that was a Mark Twain quote. And I think that nothing could replace actual roll up your sleeves, get involved, and do it. So I'm a big believer in field education. I'm a big believer also that sometimes you could have a conversation like this with somebody and you can get more than you could in a class totally. or from reading a book. And so I'm very, I don't think people know something unless they could do it. You know, people might, uh, like, they think they know it, but they don't really understand it unless they could actually do it um, in the real world. Now, you teach a really interesting and huge enterprises, and I'd be curious, why are they coming to you in terms of like learning more and retaining learning, or what is it that they're really seeking from you? Okay, so, I mean, we, we get to work with, you know, every company from Nike to Zappos um, and universities from Caltech to Harvard. I think uh, they come for a number of reasons. Uh, I think they come for information overload. Um, that's a big thing. It's debilitating. Actually, they call it information fatigue syndrome. And you might be watching this thinking, oh yeah, I'm a little bit tired of all this information. It's like there's too much to read, too little time. People go out and buy a self-help book, but it just sits on their shelf unread. And if you, it's not self-help, it's like shelf help, right? <laughs> and, and so people get too many emails, too much to be able to, to keep up with everything. And it feels like you're trying to take a sip of water out of a fire hose. So people primarily come here be, to our, our, our business because they want to learn faster. They want to catch up, they want to keep up, and they want to be able to get ahead. And one of the biggest reasons is there was just a, uh, a Gallup poll. They said that the, there's about, the engagement rate right now in, in, in work is about 13%. That means 87% aren't engaged, the people working where they're working. And I think that's a travesty because human capital is the largest line item of any business, right? That you know, payroll and salaries and such like that. And if somebody, for example, I'll give you a real world example everyone can relate to. Um, if you have to, if you spend like four hours a day just reading emails and websites and journals and books and all that stuff, just to think about all the reading you do on a daily basis, that's half of your work day. 
And that means half your day is spent reading. And if I could just double your reading speed, we, we do much more than that. We could tri you know, triple and more. But if we could just double your reading speed, that means you save two hours a day. Two hours of the course a day over the course of a year is 730 you know, hours. It, does this say if someone saves one hour a day? One hour a day over the course of a year is 365 hours. That's nine 40 hour work weeks. Imagine getting nine weeks back of productivity every single year, just saving one hour a day. So that's something small that if you change that lever, you know, you know Pareto's principle, focus on the 20% that gives you 80% of the rewards in life, that would be within the, the, the 20%. I'm definitely a huge advocate of saving time. I remember yeah. when I was in high school football, I used to wear a button down shirt with an undershirt underneath. And I would take them both off at the same right. time without unbuttoning you save my that, shirt. you save that two seconds. Those few <laughs> seconds. I remember Will Smith would always say that he's able to beat other people because those few seconds of time that you're able to save, it's so valuable. They add up. They definitely they do. They add up a lot. They do. And what are some of the things that you're doing now in terms of like what you're offering your clients and what are you you know, what's your service and deliverable now? Sure. I mean, right now we do we do corporate trainings uh, around the world. We also have um, an educational platform called QuickLearning.com, K-W-I-K Learning.com, and we publish the, some of the best accelerated learning programs out there. If you want to read faster, we have a program called Quick Reading on how to read faster, a memory program, a student success program, uh, a, a critical thinking for problem solving. So we have students online in over 150 countries. And that's where it's, it's a community of superhero brains, really. Yeah, I like that concept that you had. It's the concept of superhero you. Yes. And I mean, I'm a huge video game and comic fan myself. Sure. I've been involved with kind of like a sponsor of a, a video game. Oh, team. that's fun. So you'll see me on stage at BlizzCon and stuff like that. Oh, I love that. My guy uh, that you just met, uh, Mr. Game Theory from Civilization, he is a huge studio with giant video game players. Really? They have the largest collection of virtual currency, virtual games. That's amazing. Yeah, just right down the street. Right, and that's stores. the thing, when we were living in this world where kids are growing up like, like this on, on joysticks, um, you know, and headsets and digital devices, but how we teach them is, you know, sitting in classrooms and how, how is the teacher expected to compete with that? And I love teachers. We work with so many educators. Um, my mother is a school teacher. I grew up with learning challenges. She went into education to be able to, to be able to help me. But I think the world we live in is so, the, the classrooms of today, they don't have four walls. They, they just don't. So it's an exciting time to, to be alive. And I think play is so important also. You know, there's been studies and research saying that, that gaming actually helps you with your focus, your concentration, your, your hand-eye coordination, your um, problem solving and critical thinking abilities. So it, it's, 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 it's a lot of, uh, lot of progress, a lot of fun too. I have this very similar background because I had uh, parents that were both in education. My dad was a university president. And also my mom was a, a kindergarten teacher. Right. So I had a very hardcore formal education back sure. then. How supportive are you of like the formal educational process versus like the stuff you learn outside of it? Because I've heard yeah. you talk a little about I, it. I think that, um, I mean, I think that I, I love seeing how uh, formal education is, is how it is progressing. And I just think that it that nowadays more of the responsibility has to do with the, with the parents and for the students themselves. That teachers are in a very uh, difficult position to uh, be able to, to teach for eight hours, competing with all the stuff that's going on in the world for their uh, students' attention. And so I think you know, if you could complement it, you could create an environment where kids could, I, I like the focus being working with kids. And when I say kids, it could be anyone of any age. Um, because we're all students at heart. I think the most important thing is to focus on how to learn, like how we prefer to learn something uh, versus other people prefer to teach it. Cool. Is there any last thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience? That most of our audience are people that are really interested in uh, topics yeah, of mindset. I, 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 I absolutely do. Um, uh, first of all, if you're watching this, thank you for watching this, because I feel like we're kindred spirits, kindred mind, if you will. I find that the people that we're attracted in, in for our work are people who love to grow and they love to give. And you know, the, the fact that you're taking responsibility for that. I remember I got uh, to introduce two of my superheroes together, Sir Richard Branson and, and uh, Stan Lee. You know, Stan Lee created all these yeah. incredible superheroes, Fantastic Four and X-Men and so on. And I remember asking Stan if you could have any one superpower, what would it be? Um, I, I, well, I, first of all, I asked him actually, well, who's your favorite superhero? And he said, it's Iron Man. I said, oh, my, and he's like, Jim, who's your favorite superhero? I said, Spider-Man. And he says, with great power comes great responsibility. And, uh, and I was like, you know, that's funny. The opposite is also true, Stan. With great responsibility comes great power. And your, your audience, you watching this, you know that when you take responsibility for something, you have great power to fix things and you have power to make things better. And I think that's where it really all starts. The other part of it, when I was talking about Sam's superpowers, is um, he, we just celebrated his 93rd birthday. 
Um, it's amazing. And he still has two passions. He still goes to work Monday through Friday because he loves his element. He loves telling stories. So I think that's important to find your passion. And maybe, you know, it's hard sometimes for people to say to find their passion. I think also your passion finds you if you're open to it. And that's the thing, if you want to be a faster learner, you need to have that open mind, open heart, because lots of times the answers are right in front of you, it's just are we seeing it through in front of us? And some of us find our passions that way, just being open to, to what's out there. Um, the other, the other, his other passion, Stan, is his wife, who's one year older. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Outstanding, I love that quote. Thanks thank, so much, bro. Thank you Cheers. so much. And if you guys want a special gift, Check out jimquick.com forward slash co, K-H-O. I'll put the link in the description. Just click on it and you'll get a special gift. And this is going to actually, I'm going to share with you my 10 secrets on how to unleash your superior brain. I'm also going to teach you the keys for remembering names. And I'm also going to share with you the keys to be able to give a speech. If some of those of you are nervous about giving a speech, I can teach you how to remember a speech without notes at that link as my gift to you. Thank you. Cheers.